Hey, welcome back to class. My name is Flo. In today's practice, we will go through a 30 minute vinyasa flow sequence. And personally, in my own practice, I really like to move in all directions. When I practice every day in the morning, I like to work on uh, strength building movements and poses as well as mobility, flexibility. And so today we'll, we'll get kind of um, a little bit from everything. So we'll work on strengthening poses and movements as well as we will lengthen and stretch the body. Uh, it's basically a full body uh, practice. So hopefully it will leave you energized and motivated and just feeling good for your day. All you need is your mat. If you don't have a mat, then borrow one for, from a friend. Or if you're serious about your practice, I highly recommend investing in a good mat. But if you have carpet at home, you can also practice on the carpet. Whenever you're ready, let's begin. Let's find a comfortable seated position. I prefer hero's pose sitting on the heels. It's kind of like the symmetry of this pose, a symmet symmetrical pose. But you can also sit cross-legged. And sit nice and tall, close your eyes, relax your shoulders down away from the ears and just take a few moments to arrive. Start to feel the own body, notice what is touching the ground and from there move through the body upwards, past your hips, your lower back, your belly, your chest, your shoulders, relax them down all the way up to your head. Start to feel your own breath coming in and out through the nose. Feel the belly move forward and back, the chest forward and back or up and down. Take a moment to set an intention for this practice today. Even though it's a short class today, we still want to move with purpose and intention. Bring your hands to the heart. Bring your hands to your forehead. If it feels right to you, bow forward. Namaste. Keep your eyes closed. Interlace your hands behind your back. Move your arms over and uh, your hands over to your left hip. Sit nice and tall. Relax your left ear down towards the left shoulder. Keep that breath going, either stay here or move your head forward and back to kind of make a quarter circle with your head. Just one more. Now bring your left hand down to the ground next to you, reach your right arm up and over your head for a side bend to the left. Breathe more into the right side body, rotate the chest up towards the right. On your next inhale, release back to seated. Interlace your hands behind your back. Bring the hands over to your right hip. Sit nice and tall. Relax the right ear down. Breathe and or move the head forward and back. You decide. Starting nice and easy. Release, place your right hand to your right on the ground. Reach your left arm up and over your head. Big side bend and deep breaths into the side body. And release on the inhale. Place your hands down to the ground, come into a tabletop. Come into your toes as well and then slide the hands back just a little bit. Keep your arms straight, send the hips back. So we stretch out the feet and the toes. And with your arms straight, move the shoulders forward as far as you can. And then move them back. Forward and back a couple times. Always warming up the wrists, keeping everything healthy and strong and safe. Now come one more time forward. Now lift everything up in the palms as well as the thumb, but keep the four fingertips on the ground and set the palms back down. Lift, lower, lift. Lower, let's go for five, four, three, two, and one. Now the fingertips are pointing towards the knees. Keep your arms straight, stay on the toes, and send the hips back. Keep that breath going. Breathe into your forearms, into your fingers, your palms. 
and if you want to go deeper start to bend one arm and then the other. Just move a little bit so it feels good. And slowly release it on the heel, shake out the wrists. Then plant the hands down. Let's find the first downward facing dog. Send the hips up and back. Keep your knees bent for now. Really press into your palms. Move the chest towards the thighs. Find that nice opening and length in your shoulders and your back. Use your fingertips to grip into the, gr into the ground. Push the ground away even more. And now if you want, start to straighten your legs a little bit more. Hide your heels behind the ankles. Or walk your dog. Pedal one heel down towards the ground and then the other. From that downward dog, roll through the spine forward for a plank pose. Bring the shoulders over the wrists. Push the ground away. Tuck your tailbone, engage the core. Keep that breath nice and soft, keep it going. And create more space between the chest and the ground. So you're really pushing into the palms, pushing the ground away. And most of your weight in your hands should be in the inside part of your hands, right between the index finger and the thumb. That first knuckle where the index finger starts to leave the hand, that's where you want to press most of the weight down. Now bring the feet together and come into a side plank on the left. Reach your right arm towards your feet and then up towards the sky. Keep pressing into your left hand, push the ground away. Then rotate the top hip a little bit more forward so we come out of this twist and then move your left hip up a little bit higher so we engage the left side body more. Lift your right leg up off the left. Hold it there, keep the breath going. Slowly draw the right knee to your right armpit. Look inside the left hand and step the right foot there. We're meeting in a low lunge, set the left knee down. Now place your hands on top of your right knee. You can untuck the left toes or stay on the toes. Really up to you what feels better on your left knee. And then start to move the hips forward and back a little bit. So we're starting to bounce into this low lunge, but you're really only moving forward and your body is automatically pulling you back out of this. So you find this nice, almost effortless bouncing motion. Let's go for five, four, three, two, and one. Low lunge, reach your arms up. Pull the right heel back and push the left knee forward. So we really make this active in the lower body. Pull the lower belly in, reach out through the arms. Imagine you're holding something up and over your head. And it's kind of heavy, so you want to push it up over your head. With your exhale, release the hands down. Find pyramid, straighten both legs, step the left foot forward, shorten your stance. Make sure both heels are on the ground. Then you start to inhale, lengthen out through the spine. Exhale, fold forward and down. Maybe use two blocks here underneath your hands. On your inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, fold. Beautiful job. Now re-bend the right knee. Pivot both feet to the left. Maybe widen your stance for standing straddle forward fold. Prasarita. Fold forward and down. If you look to the feet, make sure the heels are wider apart than the toes. That way we get a nice internal rotation in the thighs. That, that way we can target the hamstrings more and we also create some more space in the lower back. On your inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, spider lunge to your left, but this time we're taking a high spider lunge. So we just bend the left knee slightly, almost as if you're doing a high squat. You really want to feel this in the left thigh instead of squatting all the way down. So you want to keep the hips kind of lifted, try to keep the left heel on the ground. Now from here, we're moving to the front of the mat for runner's lunge, frame the right foot, one-legged plank, extend the right leg back, Push into your palms, push the ground away, tuck the tailbone, engage the core. 
either point or flex the right foot, you decide, as long as you keep it active. Come back to that breath, nice and slow, through the nose, in and out. Let's send the hips up and back, three-legged dog. Send the right leg up and back, press into your palms, move the chest towards the left thigh. Let's take one more last deep breath in. Come high into your left toes. Exhale, right knee to the chest. Round your back. Lift the right knee up even higher into the chest. Keep your breath going. Press into your palms. Now flex the right foot. Try to keep both palms on the ground as you step the right foot between the hands for crescent lunge. Rise up. Reach your arms up. And then look down to the right big toe. You want to be able to see the right big toe inside the right knee. And for me, it really helps to also see the, the toe next to it inside the right knee. That way, we have the right thigh track the same direction as the right foot. If this feels uncomfortable for your lower back, feel free to bend the left leg a little bit more. Now reach the right arm back, the left arm forward, open crescent twist. With every exhale, you pull that right shoulder back even more You by using your core. On your next inhale, reach the left arm up, right arm forward, spider lunge to the left again. That high spider lunge. And then we move to the front of the mat for a side plank on the left. Stack the right foot on top. Start to move from the ground up, press into your left palm. Lift your left hip up a little bit higher. Move the right hip forward. And breathe. Release your right forearm down to the ground. Forearm side plank on the right. And if you look to my right forearm, you want to have that forearm parallel to the edge, the right edge of your mat, and not the front of the mat. That way we get a really nice external rotation in the shoulders. Move your left hip, the top hip, more forward, and lift your right hip up. Breathe. Nice and slow, in and out through the nose. With your next exhale, release your left forearm down, full forearm plank, both forearms on the mat. Tuck your tailbone, engage the core. And again, we're looking for this external rotation. So you want to keep the forearms parallel to another instead of connecting the palms together. Let's do about two more breaths here. Last deep breath in. Exhale, release the hips down, untuck the toes, sphinx pose. Move the chest forward, pull the shoulders back, bring the legs wide apart. That way you can actually backbend more. Engage your glutes. If you want to go deeper, press into your palms, straighten your arms. For seal pose, just an option. If it doesn't feel good, don't do it. Come back to seal po uh, sphinx pose with the forearms on the ground. Let's take nice uh, two last nice deep breaths. Last deep breath in. And exhale, release everything down. Shake out the hips left and right. And then push yourself back into a child's pose. And then back to downward facing dog. Feel free to stay in child's pose, pause the video. And continue when you're ready again. That's the beauty of practicing in your own home. You can go the pace that you want. And 
roll through the spine forward plank pose again bring the feet together push the ground away tuck your tailbone engage the core Transition to a side plank on the right. The left arm is reaching to your feet and then making a circle up towards the sky. Continue to press into your right hand. Remember to use your right fingertips, grip and press them into the ground as if you want to make a fist with your right hand. Move your left hip forward, the right hip more up. Breathe and then start to lift your left leg up off the right. Hold it there. Slightly internally rotate the left leg so that we activate the, the medial glute on the left side. Draw the left knee to your left armpit, hold it there. Start to look inside the right hand, nice and slow, step the left foot there for a low lunge. Set the right knee down. Stay on the right toes or untuck them, you decide. Your hands go on top of your left thigh or on top of your left knee. Start to Bounce forward and back, forward and down, I should say. And again, it's really, you push or you bounce actively forward, but in your body, this connected, connected tissue, fascia, is pulling you back out of it. And that way, you organize that tissue a little bit more, and it becomes healthier. Let's go for five, four, three, two and one low lunge reach both arms up push the right knee forward pull the left heel back pull the lower belly in and press whatever you have imaginary up and over your head in your hands push it up the fingers are nice and active last deep breath in exhale release the hands down pyramid pose straighten both legs shorten your stance both heels on the ground maybe use blocks here Inhale, lengthen out through the spine. Exhale, fold forward and down. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, fold. One more last one like this. Exhale, fold down. Beautiful job. Rebend the left knee. Pivot both feet to the right. Widen your stance. Straighten both legs. Standing straddle forward fold. Now you can see it better from this angle. The toes need to be more in than the heels to get this internal rotation in the thighs. Take a deep breath in, lift up halfway. Exhale, spider lunge to the right. Uh, fold forward and down. No spider lunge yet. Uh, lunge yet. That's next. Now take a deep breath in, lift up halfway. Exhale, spider lunge to the right. But again, we're taking this high spider lunge variation. Keep the right heel down, keep the, keep the hips high. Feel this more in your right thigh. And move to the front of the mat. Runner's lunge, frame the left foot. One-legged plank, extend the left leg back, hold it there. Keep your breath going, clean it up, make it nice and strong, push the ground away. Tuck your tailbone, engage the core. Slow the breath down. Three-legged dog, left leg up and back. Press into your palms, move the chest towards the right thigh. Reach up and back through the left heel. Take a deep breath in, come high onto your right toes. Exhale, left knee to the chest. Hold it there. Round your back. Look between the palms. Push the ground away. Start to flex your left foot. Silently step that foot between the hands. Press and lunge. Rise up. Check out your stance again. Left knee, left big toe. You want to be able to see that big toe. Maybe bend your right leg more to decompress the lower back. It also makes it more challenging to bring the right knee more down towards the ground. Breathe nice and soft through the nose. Especially when we are in poses and we're holding them and we're not moving much, focus even more on the breath. Reach your right arm forward, the left arm back. Open crescent twist.
on your inhale, reach your right arm up, left arm forward, nice and slow, spider lunge to the right again. Move to the front of the mat for a side plank on the right. Try to not use your left hand, keep it lifted. Side plank on the right. On your next exhale, release the left forearm to the ground. Forearm side plank on the left. See again if you can get this nice external rotation. Bring the left forearm parallel to the left edge of your mat. Release the right forearm down, forearm plank, both forearms on the mat. Tuck your tailbone, engage the core. Press into your forearms, hold here. Breathe, or if you want, straighten your arms, press into your palms for a long variation of a plank. So either way, forearm plank or this long extended plank. We're holding here for five, four, three. Tuck your tailbone, engage the core, two, one, release the forearms down, release the hips down. Sphinx pose again, untuck the toes, bring the legs, the feet wide apart, move the chest forward, pull the shoulders back, breathe. Look either somewhere down to the ground or just straight ahead. If you want, seal pose, straighten your arms. Let's take like one more last deep breath in. Exhale, release everything down. Place your hands underneath your shoulders, untuck the toes, and straighten your arms for upward facing dog. Bring the feet again wide apart, the arms are straight, you push the ground away. The hips are lifted off the ground, pull the shoulders back, move the chest forward, look straight ahead, flex your butt as much as you can. And instead of tilting the head upwards, we look straight ahead and just pull the head back. Last deep breath in. Exhale, downward facing dog, nice and slow. Move the hips up and back. Now from here we're coming into uh, a yogi squat and then to a seated position so you can handstand or float or just walk the feet forward. I'm gonna do a little float. Yogi squat. Set the hips down. Bring the feet together for butterfly. And then grab the feet. See how it feels if you grab the toes like this. You grab around the feet. Or if you flex the feet, and then you grab the toes like this. So that way, um, especially if you feel this in your knees, try this variation and then fold forward and down. Just for a couple of breaths, round your back. Let's take two more like this. And slowly release. Reverse tabletop, place the feet down. A little bit wider than the hips apart. Your hands go behind you, the fingertips are pointing towards you. And then you press into your feet, into your hands, lift your hips up. Keep them lifted, move the hips forward and back. Rock forward and back. This is a nice one to stretch out the front side of the shoulders. And of course, if there's any other poses you want to add before the video ends, before we come into Shavasana, then go ahead. Let's release the hips down. Slowly come onto your back for Shavasana. Hug the knees into the chest first. Give yourself a nice squeeze and extend the legs forward for Shavasana. Feel free to pause the video, add whatever you want before you come into Shavasana. Also feel free to stay in Shavasana as long as you want. Let's have the palms facing upwards. Take all the space you want and need. 
Relax the breath, relax your body into the ground. Close your eyes. Give yourself, give yourself permission to relax here, to just lay here. This is just as important, if not more important, than everything else we have done so far in this practice. You can be so proud of yourself for rolling out the mat, doing the work, doing the practice, and for investing in yourself. Thank you so much for practicing with me today again, and I hope to see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day. Namaste.